This Week at NASA. Let me welcome you. Administrator Charles Bolden and Chief Financial Officer Beth Robinson rolled out the budget President Obama has proposed for NASA in fiscal year 2012. Bolden told media at a Washington news conference that, despite austere times, the proposed budget will allow NASA to continue to innovate, educate, and build for the good of not only the agency, but also the nation. This budget requires us to live within our means so we can invest in our future. It maintains our strong commitment to human spaceflight and new technologies. It establishes critical priorities and invests in excellent science, aeronautics research, and education programs that will help us win the future. Bolden also noted that this focus on technological advancement will allow NASA to expand its human exploration of space in the decades ahead. The President's fiscal year 2012 budget funds a diverse array of human spaceflight programs that maximize our use of current capabilities such as the International Space Station, facilitate innovative approaches to ensure U.S. leadership in low Earth orbit, and position us to explore frontiers of deep space. Taken together, these human spaceflight initiatives will enable America to retain its position as a leader in space exploration for generations to come. NASA managers have announced an official launch date for Space Shuttle Discovery on STS-133. We had a, a, a really thorough review today and we set the 24th at uh, 4.50 p.m. for the launch of uh, Discovery. The announcement came at the conclusion of the Flight Readiness Review, or FRR, a meeting to assess and determine if preparations for flight are on target. I can't say enough about the work that the teams have done. They, they did a tremendous job down here at the Cape, uh, removing the foam, installing the radius blocks, making the modifications, getting the orbiter back out at the pad. The, the team just did a tremendous job. The amount of effort and work that went into this is, is really, truly amazing. Um, and then you couple that it's at the end of the program and we're done building tanks and we've effectively uh, almost all but turned out the lights at that math facility uh, to have this type of, of failure come in that, that requires a whole lot of test and analysis is a real testament to the uh, to the dedication and loyalty of those folks to, to step up and, and, and really come out and help us. Everything's going really, really well. Looking forward to the countdown starting Monday and a liftoff next Thursday. STS-133 will be the 35th shuttle mission to the International Space Station. Discovery will carry crew members Commander Steve Lindsay, pilot Eric Bowe, and mission specialists Alvin Drew, Michael Barrett, Steve Bowen, and Nicole Stott. This is Discovery's final flight to the complex, a retirement well earned. With a total of 38 missions, Discovery has made more flights than any other shuttle. She's carried satellites like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Ulysses robotic probe into space delivered the Japanese Kibo Laboratory to the ISS and was the first shuttle to rendezvous with the Russian Mir space station. It's like sending a paper airplane. Expedition 26 flight engineers Dmitry Kondratiev and Oleg Skripochka performed their second spacewalk in less than a month. They ventured outside the International Space Station to install a pair of earthquake and lightning sensing experiments. They also retrieved a pair of exposed panels that'll help international researchers determine the best materials to use in building long-duration spacecraft. Retrieving a similar materials exposure package was among the tasks the two cosmonauts performed during their previous spacewalk on January 21st. Quatre, trois, deux, unité. After the successful launch of its Ariane 5 rocket from Kourou, French Guiana, the Johannes Kepler Automated Transfer Vehicle 2, or ATV-2, is on its way to the International Space Station. The unpiloted European cargo ship will deliver some seven tons of fuel, food, and supplies to the orbiting complex. Eight days after launch, the ATV is scheduled to rendezvous and dock to the aft port of the station's Zvezda service module. It will remain there until June, when it'll undock and deorbit, then burn up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. We have 122 images, so we've collected all 72 science images. The Stardust's next mission had its Valentine's Day date with the comet, when it flew by Comet Temple 1 on February 14th. 
At its nearest approach, the spacecraft got within 112 miles of the comet and sent back about six dozen high-resolution images. Scientists had hoped to see any differences in the comet since a probe from NASA's Deep Impact mission crashed into its surface on the 4th of July in 2005. If you ask me, uh, was this mission 100% successful in terms of the science? I would have to say no. It was 1,000% successful. Each one of the 72 images taken by Stardust Next took about 15 minutes to download. In all, about 10 hours were needed to transmit all the pictures and science data from the spacecraft. In the six years since Deep Impact, Temple One has completed one orbit of the sun. And now, centerpieces. A group of 55 science and space enthusiasts who follow the NASA Ames Twitter account were invited to NASA Ames Research Center to participate in an event called a Tweet Up. These tweeps, or people who use Twitter, were given a rare opportunity to tour the labs at NASA Ames, listen to presentations, and get answers to their questions from researchers who work at the center. Social networking is, is really critical. Uh, as we move forward as a country, this is an increasing way where the public, particularly the interested public, can actually participate and, and ride with us as we, as we do the wonderful things we do at NASA. Throughout the day, the participants were busy taking pictures and tweeting about their experiences, 140 characters or about 20 words at a time. I think NASA's involvement in social media and Twitter is awesome. Um, I think it's a really great way to get the word out to the public about what's going on with NASA and kind of giving everyone an insider view of what exactly is happening. Researchers shared their latest discoveries and demonstrated some of the unique facilities at NASA Ames during the TweetUp event. The attendees came from 18 states and five countries to take part in the tweet-up. One in particular had a class of his students back in Nashville, Tennessee, following his tweets throughout the day. My students are learning how to use social media in the class. So one of the things we've been doing is Twittering, Facebooking, doing all the different kinds of things. I've had a wonderful time here, and it will use this information that I've learned here to help with uh, science programs that we have in our high school and in our county. Given the enthusiastic response online and at Ames, this will likely be the first of many more TweetUp events to come. More than 200 seventh graders recently experienced a variety of hands-on learning activities during the 2011 Bon Meyer Math and Science Odyssey at Antelope Valley College in Lancaster, California. Students from eight area middle schools attended workshops led by professionals from NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center, Antelope Valley College, and Lockheed Martin in the fields of engineering, meteorology, physics, chemistry, and mathematics. The Math Science Odyssey is named for the late Marta Von Meyer, former chief engineer at NASA Dryden, who was a regular participant in the event. Her husband, Bob Meyer, NASA's program manager for the Sophia Flying Observatory, challenged attendees to focus on math and science classes that could lead to rewarding careers in engineering and technology. So you have a real opportunity today. Take advantage of it. Walk around, learn, talk to people that are here today and have gone down the path before you. You've probably heard the saying, when opportunity knocks, open the door. Well, Marta liked to modify that a bit and said, when opportunity knocks, open the door, but don't forget to walk through it. Aim high, as your attitude in life de determines the altitude you'll achieve, just like in aviation. The Odyssey featured a series of three workshops focused on engineering and science, medical technology, and environmental or green technologies, as well as hands-on activities and aircraft life support equipment demonstrations. The day's activities wrapped up with a low-level flyover by a NASA FA-18 Hornet. 34 years ago, on February 18, 1977, NASA's first space shuttle orbiter, Enterprise, conducted its first flight test at the Dryden Flight Research Center. Constructed without an engine, the craft was mounted atop a Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft to measure structural loads, ground handling, and other capabilities prior to atmospheric flight. While Enterprise never flew in space, its series of approach and landing tests that year proved the orbiter could fly in the atmosphere and land like a glider. Enterprise was named for the starship on the popular television series of that time, Star Trek. Today, you can see Enterprise in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum's Udvar-Hazy Center 
in Chantilly, Virginia. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.